our praise. He is wonderful this morning.
love Jesus on this morning. I dare you to scream out, there's nobody like him. There's nobody like him. 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 Say nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like 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 Listen, when you woke up this morning and you looked in the mirror to get dressed, I am certain you didn't see a crown of thorns on your head. And when you went to put on your jacket or your blouse, there was nails in your palms of your hands. And then when you went to put on your shoes, the blood wasn't dripping from your ankles. You were free to worship on this morning. And the reason that was the cause because he did it just for you and I. And for that, we ought to take a few seconds. Matter of fact, that should be our prayer this morning. Lord, if you don't do nothing else, I thank you for rising. Saints of God, he just didn't get up, but he rose. And when he rose, he rose with all power in his hands. Gracious eternal Father, we thank you this morning for rising just for us. You are a great God. You're awesome God. Matter of fact, there's nobody greater than you. 
We can search the heavens above and the earth below. And there's no one like Jesus. And so for that this morning, we remove flesh out of the main focus. We remove how good or how we think we look on this morning. And we come here to worship you and spirit and in truth. Where would we be if you didn't die for us? Where would we be if you didn't save our soul? God, we thank you for the redeeming blood, for the shed blood, for you getting up on the third day. Oh God, we praise you. We magnify you for that. In spite of how we treat you, your grace and your mercy is still good after 2,000 and something years plus. Oh God, we give you the glory this morning. We give you the honor this morning. We tell you thank you for life more abundantly. Now God, allow your Holy Spirit to move in here like never before. We didn't come to look at each other, but we come to get something from the Lord this morning. Somebody needs to be delivered. Yeah, let's stop right there. Somebody needs to be delivered. Somebody needs to be set free. Somebody needs to be taken out of the hand of the enemy. Shade in the blood of Jesus is against you. We plead the blood against every demonic force against every evil presence oh god we thank you for salvation we thank you for deliverance we thank you for the word of god that should come forth this morning we thank you for every soul that's here bless every home that's represented remember those that need a miracle remember those that need to be healed remember those that need to be fixed in their minds oh god we praise you we magnify you. Remember those that are traveling on to Baltimore, Maryland on this week. Go ahead and send a word there in Baltimore. Go ahead and send deliverance in Baltimore. We speak peace in Baltimore. We speak deliverance in Baltimore. Matter of fact, we plead the blood right now that everything will work together for the good of the Lord. God, we thank you this morning. We feel good in our spirit this morning. And we're going to wait on you this morning because we believe you're going to send your anointing like never for a matter of fact, we give you permission. We'll go ahead and we'll do it now. Come on, Zion. Let's show God how much we want him this morning. Let's show God how much we need him this morning. Put your hands together. Open your beautiful mouth. Give him the highest praise. It's due unto him. It's in Jesus' name we seal the prayer. By saying amen and amen. Put your blessed hands together and remain standing as Elder Myers come and give us a morning scripture. Praise the Lord, everyone. Our scripture reading on this morning will be coming from Matthew 28. Mark 28. My apologies. I do apologize. Mark 28, and in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and set upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, fear ye not, for I know you seek Jesus, which was crucified. Verse number six said, he is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Just look at somebody and tell him, I'm so glad he got up. I'm so glad he got up. I'm so glad that he rose with all power in his hand. I'm so glad that he rose on the first day so that I can have victory in my right hand. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're going to celebrate him on this morning, give God some glory. Because he got up with all power in his hand. Hallelujah. You may take your seats in the name of the Lord. And welcome to the live stream coming from the sanctuary of Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city.
with the people of the city and it's hard. Go ahead, turn up the volume and let's have church. Savior is in this world today. I know that he is living no matter what people say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Okay. He lives within my heart. I serve a risen Savior in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what people say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives in my heart, oh God. He lives in my heart. Oh, Jesus lives. Jesus lives. Jesus lives. Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along the narrow way. Yes, Jesus Jesus lives. 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 Jesus lives
the day. I know he lives. Because he got up. I know he lives. Church, he got up. I know he lives. Church, he got up. I know he lives. Got a swift on power. I know he lives. Got a swift on power. I know he lives. Got a swift on power. I know he lives. 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 I'm glad about it. 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 Tell somebody, tell somebody, don't be ashamed, don't be ashamed to let the world know, to let your name tell your doctor, tell your friend, tell the milkman, you know he lives, tell your boat, I know he lives, tell everybody, I know he lives. Hold him down. Cause he got up. He got up. 
Figaro! 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 So you could live. So we could live. We could live. We can 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 live. Because he got us. Because he got us. He got us. He got us. You can go ahead and praise him. We celebrate him today because he got up. Hallelujah. Yeah. And just know it that he got up. It'll make you do a holy dance. It'll make you do a holy dance. He got up. 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 No longer dead. But he lived. No longer dead. But he lived. See the live. See the live.
I'm the same Your life But Jesus Oh sweet Jesus He never answered him Oh yes For he knew
glad that he did not come down from the cross. I think that there should be an expression that comes from you. Because if he had not died on the cross, you would not have the ability to repent of your sins. You would not have the ability to accept Christ as a personal savior. If you are glad that he would not come down from the cross, I dare you to stand all over this building and give it your eyes, give it the highest praise. Come on, put your hands together. Throw it out the nation. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. If you got a praise, if you grateful for Resurrection Sunday, I dare you to give Him your best praise to the Lord. Mighty good to me. Mighty, mighty good. Thank <laughs> you. 
to see another Resurrection Sunday. My name could have been amongst those names that had gone on a transition, but the Lord has been good to us. We are still here, and we magnify the name of the Lord. For those of you that are here in the sanctuary, we say to you, praise the Lord and greetings in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To those of you that are watching via live stream, that are watching through YouTube and Facebook Live, we say to you, praise the Lord. And welcome to the church in the heart of the city with the people of the city in his heart, inviting you and yours for worship. Amen. This is not a place where you just sit still and look at everybody else. But when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you, amen, you didn't have to be here. Amen. You didn't have to make it here. But it's by his grace, by his mercy. Oh, my God. Somebody grateful for the grace. <laughs> I have to sit back and think how wonderful the Lord has been to me. Amen. He has kept me amen, even when I shouldn't have been kept. That's the God that we serve. Would you... Be so kind to turn with me to the Gospel of St. John, chapter number 20. And our reading will come from verses 1 and 2 on this morning. Amen. The Gospel of St. John, chapter number 20. Reading from verses 1 and verse 2. In the name of the Lord. Waiting for you. I still hear pages turning. Sounds good when you bring your Bibles to church. <laughs> Amen. Chapter 20 of the St. John, just beginning at verse 1, and it reads on this wise to your hearing. The first day of the week cometh, and Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, to see the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them that they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre and we know not where they lay him. May the Lord have the blessing to the reading of his word and sanctify deep within our hearts. Turn to two or three people and say, have you seen my Lord? I've seen my Lord. There's something in me when I see uh, Easter Sunday, man, that I want to squall. That's preacher talk. 
that want to grab to a ear and rear back and holler, but I feel like talking about Jesus today. When you begin to read and understand the book of John, you'll see that John presents us with a narrative that lies at the heart of the gospel. He begins to tell us a story that makes us this apostolic or this gospel so powerful. Jesus was crucified and has been risen, and we watch as Mary, Peter, and an unnamed disciple discover that Jesus' tomb is now empty. The outward and visible sign that Jesus was, has conquered death and had a new creation has begun. As we are witnesses to this moment when Mary meets her risen Savior, her grief turns to joy and she brings to us the good news that is proclaimed through the ages that I have seen the Lord. This is Mary talking. She is there early in the morning. She goes to take care of some business and she sees him. John's gospel unfolds and I think in three distinct positions and I can talk portions that I can talk about a little bit this morning. The story about the people that are searching about, excuse me, the story about people searching and sadness and fear about uh, actions, about surprise and joy. And in, it is this story that takes a full circle back from the opening of the gospel. When you begin to look at it, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It begins to take a full circle and take us back to that. The scene in this particular passage opens uh, with a singular figure walking through the darkness. Here it is, somebody easy. Uh, last night, uh, my son came in from New York, and instead of flying in, he took a train. Bless him, Jesus. He took a train and uh, he I told him that I would pick him up at the train station to let me know what time he was coming in and I'd be there to pick him up. He said, 1.45. I said, in the afternoon? <laughs> it was 1.45 a.m. And I saw myself coming out of my house and looking around and I had to think to myself, I've not been out this late in years. Am I the only one here? <laughs> so now I'm walking. Looking around. Has not been here for years. Here it is in the spirit of darkness. In this darkness that you cannot see anything or go anywhere. You see the silhouette that is walking through the darkness. It's Mary Magdalene has broken through her fear in order to tend to the body of the teacher and the friend. She wanted to wash him. She wanted to make sure that he was clean ceremonially. She wanted to make sure that he was taken care of. Wait, man, we, she wanted to see this so she did not worry about the darkness or the hour. She just went to take care of her friend. Here it is, all gospel accounts of, of this moment vary for some point or another, but there's one consistent in the day, and that is that Mary de Magdalene, who was the first to go into the, tile, into the tomb, when Mary uh, finds that the stones have been removed, she jumps to conclusions. Amen. She runs and goes, and her mind starts racing, and her perception of what has happened is that someone has entered into the and stolen the body. This is her, 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 interpretation, her interpretation of it. As she begins to look, she sees it. This is what she has based her conclusion on, that somebody has gotten in there and taken his body. Amen. But the author does not tell us if she even entered or even looked into the tomb. She just saw the tomb, the stone was rolled away. Did she really know that Jesus' body wasn't there? How often do we jump to conclusions about God's actions in our lives? Y'all didn't understand it. 
So often we jump to a conclusion about what God is doing. The reason why you're going through this is because you've suffered, you've done something wrong, and that's God's punishment. But it's not. It's for your glory, for his glory, so that he can grow in his knowledge. Here it is. It's, you, you don't understand it? Here it is. Nevertheless, she runs quickly back to Peter, and she begins to tell him what has happened. Her conclusion was they stole it. They went in there to keep us from giving God praise. They went in and took his body. Amen. Here it is. Peter and an unnamed disciple um, uh, begin to, uh, who is not identified in any kind of way as whom Jesus loved. That's the only way that they can talk about it. We do not know of who it is because the Bible does not specifically say it. Over the years, we have many suggestions to whom it might have been. Some say it was John. Some say it was someone else. Amen. Who these might be. These Jewish and great leaders, Jewish and Gentile Christians are beginning to go through the scriptures trying to figure out who was there. But could it have belonged to the disciple unnamed because it, and, and I'm going to say this so that everybody can understand, maybe they just did not want to tell you the name because it wanted to be symbolic of the Bible scholars that was talking about that that person represented us. That we were consistently running to Jesus, trying to see where they laid him. But could you be the beloved disciple who is unnamed because the Bible scholars are suggesting it's us. Amen. It's us that need to see, is he there? We want to know, is he around there? Is he still working miracles? Can he still work miracles? Like Mary, they ran. The unnamed disciple, perhaps younger, arrives at the scene. Since he is the junior partner, he waits until the senior partner arrives. Peter arrives, and he allows Peter to go in first. Are y'all with me here for a minute? Inside, Peter discovers that the tomb is indeed empty. Amen. And unlike the four days of Lazarus, who stumbled out of the tomb, hindered by the burdensome grave clothes, in John 11 and 44, it says, And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes on, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Now, this is Lazarus. Amen. But when he goes in there, amen, he begins to understand that when you look at it, he sees the clothes that have been folded neatly and put in a place. Amen. And we could talk about the etiquette and the flows of us that have talked in the class that understands that there's something about etiquette that when you have finished dining, when you have finished, you take your napkin. Amen. When you have no more to say, you just boil it up and throw it onto the plate. That tells everybody that is serving that you're finished. That's, that's just plain etiquette. But here it is. When you find yourself in a position that you've never been in before, when you are not finished with it and that you're coming back, you gently fold your napkin and put it on the table to let, the, that, let those that are serving you understand that I'm coming back. Now, you don't understand that. Jesus, even in his grave, left a message for us that he's coming back. Oh, I wish I had somebody that would go with me just for a minute and understand that he is telling them, I'm coming back. Amen. I'm not dead as you suppose. Here he is. He understands the details are intriguing that the author describes the placement of the wrapping so that it also notes that the cloth that had covered Jesus' head has been found rolled up and in another part of the tomb. Now, you got to remember when Lazarus was loose, he had his grave clothes on. Amen. And Jesus has to speak to them and say, loose him. Now, we're in imagination that we're thinking that when he says it, that there's some kind of spooky stuff that takes the grave clothes and they just drop off of them. But the decoration was not just to the grave clothes, but to the individuals was out there watching them. It is our responsibility to help one another. To get out of our burdens, to get out of our troubles, to get out of the things that are holding us down. I dare you to look at somebody and say, I got your back. Mm, they said it, but soon as trouble comes, they're leaving you. 
Amen. You got to know that you got to pray for one another. It is not your responsibility to talk them down and dare tear them down, but you are to lift them up. I'm preaching hard right now. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. I don't have to be finished until 2.30. Here it is. You will understand the empty. There's no angel there. Now here it is. We should have known that the tomb was truly empty, that when Peter and the others arrived, that there's no angel. There's no angel giving directions. There's no heavenly messenger that is sitting there. John tells us that the beloved disciples saw and believed. Amen. They're talking about that. They saw and believed that because the tomb was empty, that was enough for them to say it happened. Amen. But there's some of us that are skeptical about everything. Amen. We're trying to figure it out. But he did believe. It could be that he believed when Mary, it could believe that he, excuse me, it could mean that when he said he believed what Mary said, that someone had stolen the body of God. Or he did believe that Jesus said that the night was the last meal together, that Jesus conquered the world. Don't you believe? You believe that. Here it is that when you look at John chapter 16 and verse 33, you'll see, and these things have I spoken to you that in me ye might have peace, that ye may have peace in the world because you shall have tribulation. Amen. But you should be of good care, a good cheer, for I have overcome the world. You're going to go through some trials and tribulations. You're going to go through some difficulties. Just because you turn yourself over to Christ, that means that you're not going to have any more problems. That's a trick of the enemy. Your troubles and your problems and your storms help you to develop into what God wants you to be. Are you listening to me? Somebody under the sound of my voice is going through right now, but God got his hands on you. In due time, he going to bring you out. Slap somebody five if they'll let you and say, I'm coming out of this mess. Here it is. Amen. And, and, and here there's no shout of joy. We don't see no celebration. Amen. When they find themselves going back after looking into the sepulchre. Amen. The emptiness of the tomb does not seem to have made any difference. Amen. Could you imagine hearing the stories of Jesus when he says he begins to teach them and begins to instruct them and begins to show them all of the great things that God has done. Amen. Could you imagine walking back after looking in the sepulchre even after he said that he would rise up? We find ourselves in a position where we don't even believe that he's done. There's no excitement. When you came in the building today, you was excited to be a part of Resurrection Sunday. You got on your good Sunday clothes. Amen. But now there's a time to worship him as never before. Here it is. We understand that he is doing some great things. Here it is. We understand their focus turns to Mary outside of the tomb. Amen. The emptiness of the tomb doesn't seem to make a difference. Amen. How many, and I need to share this with you, how many of us in this congregation feels no, feels joy? There, there's no joy, there's no hope, and there's no peace. Amen. On this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. They're just suffering with some stuff. Now you're saying, Bishop, you're supposed to give us excitement, but I'm here to tell you, there's some people in need. Amen. They've been struggling for a long time. They had to come here. It is not by accident that they walked through the door. Amen. This was the plan of God from the beginning of time that you would walk through the door and say to the Lord, what must I do to be saved? Focus returns back to Mary standing on the outside of the tomb. She's weeping. Amen. She's crying and she does this. Amen. This time she enters the tomb. Amen. She enters, and when she seems that neither Peter nor the disciples offer any words of comfort to her, amen, or encouragement to Mary. But Mary does not find an empty tomb while the body of Jesus is not there. The synoptic gospels gives the account that there are two angels that respond to her almost ridiculous question. Of course, she should be weeping. Amen. Of course, he is the man that had delivered her. Amen. That had laid his hands on her. Mary repeats, amen, her interpretation of the situation and say the thief has stole her friend's body. 
Finally, she repeats the question once again to a man she believes is a gardener. And this is that may not be ridiculous or understanding as it seems, but it be that John was giving us clues on how we might understand what is happening. Two things drive us back to the beginning of John's gospel that encourages us to view this as not the end of the story, but the beginning. We think that because he died on the cross, it's over. Amen. There's no more. Some folk feel it's in over. It was been a good run for the last three and a half years. We've seen him heal the sick. We've seen him raise the dead. We've seen him feed 5,000 and then turn around and feed 4,000 more. Amen. We see him heal the crippled man. Amen. We see a woman scrum, scrum, walking and struggling through the dirt. Amen. And to touch just the hem of his garment. Amen. And believe they thought that this might be the end. Amen. First, we need to understand in the opening of John's gospel. Uh, amen. John's first words are questions directed to the disciple John the Baptist. And I run the lead it for you. It says, who are you looking for? And that's John chapter 1 and verse 38. And Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, Who, what do you see? Amen. What shall, and what saith unto him? Rabbi, who is it to say, being an interpreted master, where dwellest thou? Amen. Here it is. And here in the beginning of this creation, Jesus asked Mary the same question. Amen. Whom are you looking for? Amen. Whom have you come in here searching for? You want William Lee Bonner? He's gone. Amen. Amen. Oh, R.C. Lawson, he's gone. Amen. So many people have left that have told the story. But if you're looking for somebody, it's not who you think it is. Amen. But if you're looking for something that's going to change your life, it's God in Jesus Christ. You got to repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. A new assignment is beginning. Amen. A new story. It is Jesus asking the same question of us says this resurrection morning uh, what are you looking for uh, amen it, is, it was when Jesus called him by name uh, that Mary recognized the Lord's voice uh, when she was in the garden uh, amen and she thought it was a gardener uh, amen but when she heard her name uh, amen she understood it was Jesus uh, I want to let you know you know when the Lord is calling you uh, Amen. You know when he's calling your name. My mind is going back. I remember as a young man and a young preacher that my pastor would come, son, want you come here. I need you to do something. Amen. I know I was many sons, but when he pointed at me and said, son, I kept on walking to him. Amen. But as time went on, amen, there were moments when he called me, son. And then there were other moments when he said, read, amen, come here. When I heard my name, I knew it was business. Amen, I've come to give you a word. He's calling your name. Amen, that's why you got up this morning. You had an attitude while you were getting dressed. I don't know why I'm going here. It's been cold and raining, but something is pulling me home. Something is pulling me back to God. I've come to give you a word on this resurrection Sunday morning. The God I serve is raising up in your life and you not to give him a praise. I need some folk that knows that he's calling your name. Come and see. And as we begin to call, as he was being called to see, the new things that God was doing in our lives uh, and in this world, uh, unlike the synoptic 
Gospels, uh, that that beginning of dawn, uh, John's tale uh, begins in darkness. Uh, amen. They understand the absence of light. Uh, that when you read the story, uh, there's no light anywhere. Uh, it's just a single figure uh, that's walking in the dark. Uh, and this is the writer uh, who's opening up the gospel uh, and took and wants you to understand uh, that is not stable. Uh, and that every opening uh, of a new creation, uh, that this is the beginning. Uh, this is God doing the work. Uh, I've walked the earth uh, and I've went down into hell uh, and I've preached three days uh, and I led captivity captive. Uh, and while I did it, I brought them out. Uh, and the Bible said that when the tomb walked out, uh, they were testified all over Jerusalem uh, about how good he's been. How wonderful he is. I need a praiser. I need a true worshiper that will stand up and say, He brought me out. He opened the doors. I should have been dead, but here am I. I should have died. Amen. When that car hit me and T boned me, and my body shook, and I blacked out. But God said, I'm not finished with you yet. I got what? for you to do. Amen. Understand it. Could it be that John is taking us back once more to when darkness ruled the earth and when was out form a void and darkness covered the face of the earth. Genesis chapter 1. The author is echoing. Amen. Paul's declaration that in the death and resurrection of Jesus, we're experiencing a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Hey God, amen. Everything old has passed away. I'm no longer a drinker. I don't need those more, those marijuana cigarettes. I don't need all of that stuff. I'm a new creature. All things are passed away. If you want to be washed, I dare you to accept the blood. If you want to be clean, I dare you to accept the blood. If you want to be whole, I dare you to accept the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing. Oh, slap somebody five and say nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. We let him. Oh, God. And everything has become new. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. And when we are in a garden, Without knowing this, Mary has continually uh, uh, or correctly identified Jesus uh, as the gardener uh, who's bringing a new world, uh, amen, a new life, uh, and a new celebration, uh, and a new creation uh, into being uh, as he had done before. Uh, all things become new, uh, are being taught unto him, uh, and without him, nothing, uh, not one one thing came into being. Uh, amen. It was there. Uh, amen. That we've come to understand uh, that being who he is uh, and he being our life uh, and the life that has life in all people. Uh, he is the light in darkness uh, and darkness has not overcome him. Uh, I heard in John chapter 1 uh, somewhere around verse 5 uh, it said that all things are made by him uh, and without him was nothing. Uh, anything made that was made uh, and in him was life uh, and life was the light of men uh, and verse 5 said and the light shineth uh, in darkness uh, and night that darkness comprehended in not. Uh, I've come to give you a word. Uh, you are the light. Uh, you the light of the world. Uh, that's why he filled you with the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's why he gave you the anointing uh, like he never gave you before. Uh, you're going through some hell, baby. But I've come to let you know, Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The first creation story, God drove Adam and Eve out of the garden. But in the new creation story, Jesus sends Mary out of the garden 
rejoicing. Uh, amen. And she uh, is sent to tell somebody, uh, everybody in darkness, uh, that I've come, uh, that the word has come, uh, and the word is moving, uh, and the word is in operation. Uh, you don't have to understand it now. Uh, amen. The glory of the Father uh, and only of the Son of Grace. Uh, I've seen, oh God, uh, the Lord myself. Uh, and what are you saying, Reed? Uh, I seen him for myself. Uh, a young boy uh, running the streets of New York City, uh, needing some help. Uh, amen. Self assurance. Uh, amen. Self esteem uh, had locked me. Uh, and I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. Uh, but I heard the voice uh, of Jesus calling, uh, Come unto me. Uh, I've come to give you a word uh, that the God I said uh, is not going to leave you. Uh, I've come to give you a word uh, that you got to understand uh, that the God I said uh, is your God. Uh, I had to ask you, uh, have you seen my Lord? Uh, have you had a connection with him? Uh, have you begun to walk with him? Uh, have you begun to call him by his name? Uh, and the thing I like about him, uh, he forgives us of our sins. Uh, that's what the blood is all about. Uh, that's why you don't have to worry. Uh, you don't have to complain. Uh, you don't have to sit there uh, and say, nobody forgives me. Uh, but the devil is a liar. Uh, he forgave me. Uh, he reached back down uh, through all my dirty stuff, uh, looking at all my filth uh, and filled me with the Holy Ghost. Uh, he's coming to your house. Uh, he's coming to your children. Uh, on last week, uh, we said a prayer uh, and made a made uh, a joint statement uh, that say we were praying for our family. Uh, I dare you uh, that are in this church uh, to look down your row uh, and say in the name of Jesus, uh, send an anointing. Uh, ask them have they seen uh, my Lord. Uh, he's a way maker. Uh, he's a heart fixer. Uh, he's a mind regulator. Uh, he's a glorified God. Uh, that's why sometimes uh, I've got to get up uh, and dance for the Lord. Uh, I know uh, I should be dignified. Uh, I know I should cross my legs uh, and hold my hands. Uh, but you don't know my story. Uh, you don't know what I've been through. Uh, you don't know where he brought me out. Uh, I can't sit still. Uh, I can't keep quiet. Uh, I got to open my mouth. Uh, I need a few praises. Uh, somebody that I help me. Uh, one will take a thousand. Uh, two will take ten thousand to fight. Uh, but if we, the church, uh, would get together, uh, we would see the anointing uh, like we've never seen before. Uh, Pour out your spirit. Uh, go row by row, God. Uh, heal and deliver. Uh, set free right now. Uh, Lord, go row. Uh, go and heal that cancer. Uh, go, Lord. Uh, take that brokenness, uh, that sadness of heart. Uh, go, Lord. Uh, they need financial breakthrough. Uh, provide for them. Uh, be Jehovah Shalom, uh, the God of peace. Uh, be Jehovah Jireh, uh, the God that provides. Uh, Lord, help them. Uh, our God, uh, this resurrection morning, uh, I'm glad you got up. Uh, this resurrection morning, uh, I'm glad you woke up. Uh, this resurrection morning, uh, I'm glad uh, that the Holy Ghost uh, is still in operation. Uh, I need a praiser. Uh, that no mind open it. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Just reach down and touch somebody and say it's coming through you. There's a blessing coming through you. See, you didn't believe that. I think to stand up and say there's a blessing coming through you.
Mary couldn't worry about it. Now, I need to slow down just for a moment, and I'm going to let you go. Jesus had gone and did a miracle for Mary. She was delivered of something like seven demons that had occupied her body and her mind. And Jesus loosed her from it. Man, I, I just hope I can have some folks that are not scared and that could say, in the name of Jesus, you're loosed. Hey, my God. Jason and Chris, did you notice that they were afraid to say it? They barely got it out of their mouth. But whatever you speak out of your mouth, God has given you power and authority to loose on heaven and in earth. It says that whatever you bind on heaven shall be, whatever you bind in heaven shall be bound in on earth. Whatever you loose in heaven shall be loosed on earth. Whatever you need God to do right now, I dare you to say in the name of Jesus, you're loose. sent out in the darkness to go and tell everybody what she had saw. She said she understood that Jesus was there. She said it in John 1 and 14. Amen. She tells them when she begins to look at it. And it says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory and the glory as the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Amen. She found herself in a position where she saw God at work. And, and I want you to understand this. Now, you want to hear me hoop and all that? Come on back next Sunday. That suit will look good on you a second time. Here it is. There are some individuals that are in this building today that have left Jesus. I'm, this pandemic has made you stay home, afraid to come to church, afraid to get in there, but you still went to the movies. What did that old grocery stores? Went to work. You went everywhere, went to your cousin's house and had the barbecue in the backyard. <laughs> but you were afraid to come in the church because you were afraid you were going to catch something. Afraid you were going to catch something. Now, Let's see the hands of those of you that have been coming on a regular basis. Just let me see your hands. Okay. Now leave your hands up if you've got, you caught anything but the Holy Ghost. <laughs> she didn't know what I was talking about. The reason why I'm taking my time here is because you have gotten the opportunity to come back and get it right. Yeah. I'm not holding no prayer. I'm not holding no basket line and say, put $25 in here and put $50 in here and all your stuff is going to be answered. I'm not going to tell you that. 
Only thing I can tell you what the Bible says, pay your tithes and God will bless you. Some of you have left of your first love. Some of you are struggling. Julia, there's a song that's bringing in my mind. How do you know that? There's a song that's been ringing in my spirit, and somebody needs to sing it. Take me back. Take me back. To the place where I Take me back now. Take me back. This is not just for the sinners. This is for the believers as well. Take me back to Lord where I If you want them to do something, I dare you to stand on your feet all over this road. Take me back. Take Don't worry back. about who's looking at you. Take me back. Don't worry about Take who's looking at you. Put your hands up to God and say, take me back. I need a refill. Take me back. Take me back. Take me back. Take me back to Somebody needs to come I out here. Feel Somebody like needs to so just walk out from you, Lord. God's been tugging on you. Come on. But still I hear you calling me. Struggle and strain. Walk on down. Yes, yes, yes. Those old simple ways Fill up the that I I once knew. Fill up. Fill up the altar. Lord, the memories of trouble in me. Renew my strength. Restore my joy. Come on, fill the altar. And drive my weeping eyes. Oh, come on, come on. Take me back. Take me back. This is your Take opportunity to say, Lord, back. take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to, to the, the place, place. To the place. Where 